Like the first book that I ever bought that was about broadcasting was her seven rules to live by. When I decided I wanted to be a sports broadcaster, I was like, okay, so who do I need to model my whole career and my whole life after? It was her. So I hope this interview is just, if nothing else, just like give someone somewhere a little bit of inspiration, a little sense of peace, and just like hearing her words. I'm all set. I'm all set. I appreciate wow. you doing this, seriously. You're very welcome. You give life to everyone. You know you do. You just say That's a real thing. That's why I said I was honest. That's a real thing. Oh, y'all just saying it because it's true. <laughs> It's <laughs> <laughs> just saying it because it's true. <laughs> well, you know, you know, thank y'all for really seriously. So first of all, Robin, I gotta go back to Damn! Like you come what? on! Stop! Look at that! Look at all put together first of all, everything. I usually wear black, but you wear colors. So yeah. I was like, I gotta find something that has a color in it and then I'm gonna do it. Why do you always wear black? I don't because I feel like it's my power color. You yeah, know what I mean? Is, so like is. when I'm on the sidelines and all these uh -huh. dudes are around, it's like I wanna look like a biker chick. Like yeah. I leave Ooh. on a motorcycle. Well, you know, you've got those Georgia roots and Andy. <laughs> you, you Listen. And, so Andy is the one who connected us to everyone. Coach Landers from the University of Georgia, one day he hits me up and he's like, you know who you remind me of? Robin Roberts. I'm mm -hmm. like, no, I don't. I couldn't. That's not what I could ever be. He's like, no, I'm going to email her. It's going to be great. He sent an email to you. Yep. You responded in like a day. Yep. And you said, no, yeah, I'll talk to her right after the Grammys. And I, <laughs> I remember seeing like being CC'd on the email. Oh, yeah. she, right. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, right after I do the red carpet. Yeah, yeah. But that was just... That was a lot for me, you yeah. know what I mean? Like hearing you respond instantly made me feel really special. And I just thought if I could do that for anyone ever, like I want to be able to do that. So, and you have, because you know, I asked you, I had a young intern here. Yeah. I reached out to you yeah. because she admires you yeah. and you responded right away. But coach Landers is somebody I r respect the Dickens out of mm -hmm. and have known him forever when I was covering sports. And for him to reach out and the way he talked about you, I said, I want to meet this young woman. So um, it's hard to impress yeah. Coach Landers. He doesn't throw around those compliments sure, easily. Sure. Right. So that says a lot about you. I hear you, but it's not about me. It's no. about you. <laughs> I kind of want to go back because I actually went back through the book, Eight Rules to Live By, mm -hmm. which was one of the first books that I had to read like back in 2008 when it was released. And you mentioned the fact that you went to ESPN and turned it down the first time. Yeah. Right. Tell me why. I, why? Because mm -hmm. as I said, um, in 1987, they approached me. I went up for an interview and I said, I didn't want to be the answer to a trivia question. What black woman was hired in 1987 and fired in 1988 <laughs> no, no, no. by ESPN? <laughs> because I hadn't, I had only been out of school for a few years. Okay. I hadn't worked in a major market. I had worked uh, two places in Mississippi, my home state. Mm -hmm. uh, it was in Nashville, Tennessee at the time. And I knew that the margin of error for somebody like myself mm -hmm. is less than a, a, a counterpart. Sure. And it's not something I grumble about. Mm -hmm. or it's angry just the about. truth. It's the truth. Yeah. And so I knew I had, I, wa I knew I wanted staying power. Mm -hmm. So I said, thank you, but no thank you. Went to Atlanta, GA. Hey, peace up. Wait, hey. peace up. A town down. You got to do it. Just Bri can you? Uh, I mean, Bristol, uh, Atlanta. <laughs> Atlanta. Bristol, Atlanta. We're going uh, to the A. Uh, you know, yeah. And I, was my, and I was in my 20s. Hey. So I was. B103. We can be. B103. <laughs> Mike Roberts in the morning. Yeah. So I went to Atlanta, uh, worked radio and television. Right. Thankfully, ESPN came calling again. Mm -hmm. I did, did not hesitate, and I was there for 15 years. I know. Uh, off and on at, at, at Good Morning, at Good Morning, Mary, at uh, ESPN. And I'm so grateful that it's so you know when you're young, yeah. You you just want it now, right? Because we live in this reality world. We do. Everything's instant. You want to be a TV star. You want to be a you know a recording. And you see everyone. It seems like everyone else is yeah, right now. Right there. Right now. Yeah. Um. But I want lasting power, mm -hmm. so um, I did that. And also, yeah. when I see you, mm -hmm. when I see Sage Steele, yeah. when I see, and I can go on and on and on um, of the black women mm -hmm. that are there at ESPN, I felt a sense of responsibility that, that had I not done well, mm -hmm. that it mm -hmm. would have been less likely yeah. that they would have hired somebody to look like me. And y'all are y'all are flat out talented. You yeah. didn't need anybody. I mean, I'm but it's a real thing. But, well, one, it's not even that. It's the me being able to watch you and be mm -hmm. like, oh, I can be on Sports Center. So mm -hmm. it's more than just someone saying, yes, Maria, I'll give you a job. But it's me even having an idea or a thought well, that that's where that. I could be. Yeah. You know, that's what you were. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that very much. Yeah. But uh, does my heart so to see all the women that are mm -hmm. there at ESPN because it wasn't that way when I when I started back in the day. Ooh, can we go back in the day? Then? Okay, let's back do it. Back in the day when you were young and a kid and you're still young. Had a mullet. Had a mullet. 
of the bad. What are some of the first? Okay, okay. I'm sure there were some failures in the beginning. Some. Let's talk through at least one of them. Oh my gosh. Um, I <laughs> I remember um, I was working in Nashville mm -hmm. and I was filling in for the weekday anchor, and that was a big deal. The sports anchor. Yeah, that was a big deal mm -hmm. you know, because that's top thirty market. I'd only been in the market for uh, a short amount of time. And it was in a large building, mm -hmm. and the studio was in one end of the building, and the sports office was in the other. Right. So the, the announcer goes, and Robert Roberts filling in for Rudy Kalis with the sports right after this. So mm -hmm. I get up on the set like I'm all that, I'm and then I'm ready. Then the director, the voice of God, Robin, we do not have your sports tapes. I'm not ready. I had to run back <laughs> mm -hmm. across the, I mean, like, you know, get the tapes, bring them to the tape room, right. get back to the set. I'm like huffing and puffing, and they're like five, four, three. I'm like, oh, I got back in time. This is great. And they go, now, now Robin with the sport. Can't talk. I can't you talk. Can't. I couldn't talk. I lost my breath. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, oh Jesus, why did I do that? And like, people are going to think. And just the opposite, mm -hmm. uh, because I was really honest and said, I'm sorry. Just, <laughs> yeah. I just ran and I'm You so, told everyone? I told, I just, You're I, alive. I, I know. We were alive. Yeah. We were alive. And I told everybody, and like, how refreshing. Didn't try and play it off yeah, or anything, yeah. anything like that. Um, asked some stupid questions early on. Mm. Uh, I can Did remember. Did anyone fire back at you? No one fired back. When I said stupid, mm -hmm. or not stupid, mm -hmm. it's not the most well thought out. And some coaches, mm -hmm. and I'm talking about at the local level. Yep. I wasn't at the, at the uh, and that's another good thing about why you want to start off local, why you want to start off in a smaller market. Mm -hmm. And I remember one time I said, is this the, se is this the, the season that you anticipated? Mm -hmm. They had a losing record. And he was like, who anticipates that? <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. Yeah, you're like, oh, my bad. No, <laughs> my bad. My bad. <laughs> I didn't mean it. Uh, see, what, what happened was, <laughs> um, but there are all those things. But, you know, failure is a part of success. Yeah. And um, I'm not afraid of failure. I have, um, I'm sure I'm going to fail again. Mm -hmm. um, it's not something I relish or want to do, but right. I learn so much more from that than I successes. To, sometimes um, failing fast is a part of an athlete's makeup. And in case y'all didn't know, she was a baller. <laughs> I, was, I was no Maria Taylor, Listen, but I was like, Wait, what, what was your uh, your basketball, your style? What were you good at? The strength? What was give it good? Oh my God. Give it to me. I'm right here. Back it up. 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 <laughs> Oh, you were posting oh, them up. Oh, I was posting them up. She was like bringing it back oh, in, back oh, in. Oh, back it up, back it up, back it up. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love that. Hook shot, did you? Mmm, had that little cream. <laughs> because I'm 5'10", yeah. which is not tall by any sure. Street. But back in my day, you, I was a post boy. I was posting in high school. Okay. I was posting in high school, but I was wise enough to know that in college, no one wanted a 5'10 post player. No. So I learned a different position on my own time in my senior year of high school because right. I wanted to get that college scholarship. Gotcha. Not because I wanted to be freshman of the year at Southeastern Louisiana University, which I was. Please hold your <laughs> which pause. She was. Does anyone think someone bring the trophy? Does yeah, anyone? no, I don't want to. I'm not bringing me, that up. But I was positioned. I, I was positioned. Just hold that. <laughs> Freshman year? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, <laughs> I would like to think. The academy. But it's all about positioning yourself. How, how many times in sports do you hear, did you hear, get the proper rebounding position, get the all proper the scoring position? Coach That's Landry, life. All the time, yeah. That's life. And so I was positioning myself for some good things to happen for me. When did you realize, because I'm guessing the goal is not always, I didn't know that I wanted to be a sports bras broadcaster when I started mm -hmm. college. Uh, when did you realize that, you know what I want to do? I want to work for, say, ESPN, or I want to call games. I wanted to be a pro athlete. Yeah. I did. Oh my goodness. I was a state bowling champion when I was 12 years old. Loved tennis. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. I, I dreamed of going to Wimbledon uh, one day. Mm -hmm. Didn't make it there with the tennis racket, but yeah. I did make it with the microphone in my hand for ESPN when I covered um, the major Grand Slams. But it was in college um, that I realized, well, actually, late in high school, I realized I wasn't going to be that professional athlete. Yeah. And but you know how everyone says, well, find your passion. I yep. knew it was sports. Mm -hmm. Older sister in television in New Orleans, and she was the one who encouraged me. Why don't you combine the two? So I was like, I wasn't one of those people. You know how some of our colleagues they would turn. They said when they were little, they would turn down the mm -hmm. the, the, the the set and they would act like they were announcing. Yeah, yeah. No, I wanted to be in. I wanted to be there playing. <laughs> you I to be doing. I didn't want in the game. I want in the game. Right. I didn't want to be talking about those. Back folks down. <laughs> I, wanted <to> be, <laughs> I wanted that. But uh, in, in college, I realized um, I want to be a sports journalist, and it was a time where you just didn't see many women yeah. uh, doing that. But uh, I was I, I just knew that that was where my heart was, yeah. and I just worked really, really hard. In your book, something else you said was, I didn't care that I was a woman, I didn't care that I was black, I was, or I, people might have thought that I didn't belong. Mm -hmm. I was going to push my way in. Yeah. What are some of the pushes that you Oh, gosh. You um, well, everywhere, the, the, 
the stations where I began, mm -hmm. they created the position for me. Mm -hmm. Meaning there wasn't a job opening. Yeah. That's called pushing your way in. <laughs> right? That's a way like going, the, the job did not exist. Did not exist. Mm -hmm. And I, I was just like, just get me in the door, give me an interview. Mm -hmm. So I would get an interview. And the first one, my sister helped me out. It was mm -hmm. her old, old station in uh, Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. $5.50 an hour. <laughs> yes, $5 $5 first a week, No job. benefits. Shout out to the first I know. Job. Oh, gosh. And I thank you, WDAM, WDAM. Not even in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. In East of Butchie, Mississippi, mm -hmm. outside of Hattiesburg. And I, I met with them, and they were like, we don't have an opening. I was like, just... And they created this part-time position. Yeah. The same thing in Nashville. I was like the lifestyles reporter, mm -hmm. even though they knew I was going to work in the sports department. Um, the third anchor at WAGA in Atlanta. They didn't have mm -hmm. a third sports person, and so that's how I pushed my way in. I was just, I just made people believe that. Um, and when I would get that interview, Alan Grigg, <laughs> news director in in Nashville, Tennessee. Thank you, Alan Grigg. <laughs> oh my goodness. You know, it's one of those things that you. You, you hear, mm -hmm. um, oh, we'll be in touch. Oh, I really like you. Yeah. And you think, oh, no, it's you, not. I'll never hear from he you again. He created that job for, to get to that top 30 market because yeah. I was two places in Mississippi, which I loved, mm -hmm. but I needed to move away from home. So I knew it wasn't because people knew my mom and my daddy, and that's why they liked me in Mississippi, right. that I was actually doing the work that was going to get me to the network level. And it was when I was there that I said, I'm gonna be at ESPN one day. Mm -hmm. That was a goal. Yeah, and then she got a call. You, what did you think about ESPN? The first time I went there, I bombed my interview. You, you know did? How, did? Did you go on an audition? Oh, yes. I was terrible. Al Jaffe? Yes! Oh, girl. He was the one who brought me in. Really? What'd yes. you do, Maria? <laughs> I just didn't know baseball. Like, I, I don't know, I, don't, I didn't understand it at the time, right. and so we did baseball highlights, because it's the spring. I had worked all through football season on CSS, Comcast right, Sports right. South, shout out to you guys. You know, they don't <laughs> uh -huh. exist anymore. And they were like, we'll bring you in, we'll get you some spring sports, you'll do a news update. I had never anchored before. When I called you, because Coach Landers connected us, remember, right. I was like, I don't have any experience anchoring, and SEC Network is a thing. Uh -huh. And you told me, you were like, you have to go get that experience. Like, that's... That's going to be the next step for you, and I. You got to have that tape. You got to yeah. have that something for them to show. Yeah. But you have. But you know what? There was some rawness about you. Mm -hmm. Still is. <laughs> Still a lot of rawness about me. <laughs> <But there, laughs> you, you can't. You can't. I mean, there's some things you can teach people. Like you can teach them. You know, you don't know baseball. I can yeah, teach yeah. you. But you can't teach them the intangible. Either you, like my dad would say, either you have it or you don't. Right. And I think that's what Andy saw, Coach Landers. That's mm -hmm. what I saw in you, and just seeing the early material of you. It's like. Yeah, a little Maybe rough around the edges, but yeah, she's got something. She's going to yeah. round her out a little bit. <laughs> so, Doe, just say, the first time that I did it, I didn't, I got all the names wrong, all the sports wrong, and they're like, Maybe next time you come, you know what I mean? It'll be okay. So I really went back home for another, I went into grad school, because I was like, this isn't going to work. Like, ESPN basically just told me, no, they'll never bring yeah. me back. And then four years later. Look at that. It's kind of almost the same so thing, what? except you said no to them. They said no to you. <laughs> that is the difference <laughs> like between our but, stories. Hey, but you know what? But the end result is the same. True. We both worked really True. hard. We both knew that we had some work to do. Right. What would you say to a kid who's sitting at home? I mean, everyone wants to know their path before they get there. Uh, you, and you, oh, how you boring don't. is that? How you can't. Why do you want to know your path? But kids what? do. They want to hear our no. stories to see oh. if they can, you know what I mean, faction the same thing together. Success leaves clues. Yes. I do believe in that. Okay. And I was a big one on um, somebody that I uh, admired or someone. I would reach out to them. I would ask for them to critique sure. my tape, um, ask for suggestions in that. Um, but everybody, if you talk to everybody mm -hmm. at ESPN, yeah. if I look, I sit next to Michael Strahan, yes. NFL Hall of Famer. Mm -hmm. I, I work next to George Stephanopoulos, who worked for a time in the White House. Mm -hmm. um, everyone has a different path, right. but we're but we're sitting next to each other. What are the clues then? Because you've interviewed some determination, very successful people determination, too. curiosity, um, authenticity. Mm. Can I just can I just don't fake it? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I know you hear about fake it until you make it, but I mean, being. Uh, uh, your, your your most authentic self raising your hand mm. uh, knowing that you're not that good in the beginning and yeah. being okay with that right um, and just truly putting in the work as athletes mm. you know that I mean fail like, fast yeah fail fast learn yeah. Learn, yeah. learn learn yeah. from it learn from it and I'm to a, know I'm put it in the cookie jar next time I promise, <laughs> I promise. but big picture yeah I'm a I'm big dreams big okay. dreams but focus small so set that big goal that you have for yourself but what are those day-to-day -day things? What are those little things that are going to ultimately get you to the goal? Don't want it all at the same time. Don't all well, all at once. Right. There's no lasting power there. The role that faith plays in your life. <sighs> mm. Woo, good.
good one. Oh, my goodness. Thank you for asking that. Uh, hmm. Talk about, um, I'd be nowhere without it. I've had um, health challenges. I blow a kiss to my mom and my dad every morning who are up there on their heavenly balcony cheering me on and cheering uh, on their uh, three other children and grandchildren and great-grands and that. And I'm just so grateful that my parents instilled in me a belief to have a um, to have faith and to know when um, uh, things would go wrong and that I would be challenged and to know that when fear knocks to let faith answer the door. Mm -hmm. And I am just so grateful. I was one of those kids like, you know, on Sundays, oh, I'm going to church. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, okay, well, you're not going to do anything for the rest of the day. If you uh -huh. can't go to church or, or anything like that. Uh, but it wasn't just about going to church. No, it wasn't just about that. It was just um, this community that was uh, lifting you up. And something that's the first thing I do when I move to a new city is, mm -hmm. find, is to find a church home. And I'm just so grateful that my parents instilled that belief in me mm -hmm. that there is a higher being and to be uh, humble and kind and mm -hmm. be grateful. And um, I, I, I would be, it's my bedrock. It's my foundation. I know. And a lot of people don't. I, I need tissue. <laughs> Please, Dad, come on. does anyone? Come on. There it is. You see I got this right here. No problem. I, I didn't oh, want to. Oh, I, I, I almost that's... had to reach myself. Oh, that was a, that was a, I had to go reach for it myself. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, no. No, but that really. I, I think it's important for us to talk about. Oh, uh, thank I, you. I think we forget about it sometimes. You know, like, can I just tell you a quick story? Yes. Okay, so I'm working at Good Morning America. Mm -hmm. We're doing a story, a series. Um, how we get up in the morning, what we do, our morning routine. People yeah. always love that. What time oh, you go yeah. to bed? What time you get up? <laughs> so this was, oh, God, this was back in the 90s. Um, I wasn't a regular on the show. And I said, well, you know, I say a prayer mm -hmm. in, in the morning. Yeah. And um, and so the producer, they did it. But I'm thinking, it's never going to make the light of day. Yeah. This is on tape. Uh, it's the prayer of protection. Mm -hmm. The light of God surrounds me, the love of God enfolds me, the power of God protects me, the presence of God watches over me wherever I am, God is. Mm -hmm. I said this, mm -hmm. um, it made the peace, yeah. and ABC told me for years they would get calls requesting the prayer. That I was afraid to show my faith because that's not something you do. Sure. Yeah. And just the opposite happened. People. Um, was refreshing for people to see someone speak authentic authentically about their faith, and I'm so grateful for that. That's what makes you so endearing, though. It's almost like every moment that you have, whether it was, okay, I was racing out, and then I came back and I just told a story. Like, <laughs> I was just honest, like, I, I, I pray in the morning. Yeah. And then it's something that yeah. everyone attaches themselves to, because mm -hmm. a lot of people are doing the same thing. That's right! Right, they but you talk it. about it. No one else yeah. talks about it. But I took. You, but you know, I gotta say, you know, I'm I'm a little, I'm a little bit older now. I'm a little older. You're young. Um, yeah, still. Um, and it, 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 I had to grow into it. Okay. So I know if if you're a young person that that is watching, um, that yeah, you'll you'll into you'll, yourself. Yeah, almost. you'll yeah, you will. I'm gonna call you every time, I'm like Robin. I really wanna take my wig off. I want to be myself. You, you got Can I do it? I, I look good. I know. Let's right. talk about black hair. How oh, oh, hey. Girl, you oh. and hair on TV. Let's talk about it. I am not my hair. Yeah. My when did you stop becoming your hair? Oh, my gosh. Uh, when I lost it all. Boom. No, for real. Yeah. I mean, I, oh, gosh. If you go back, I know if you go back and you see all, you know, all the different, oh, hairstyles, mm -hmm. the mullet, the this, the, the you know, the Afro puffs. Uh, all this, that, and the other. Um, it's the Afro mullet. Uh, the Afro, the Afro it mullet was cute. Was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but I really, when I when I went bald, yeah, I was like, what am I? But you know, for yeah. black women, it is a daily conversation. Daily. Daily. Like when Almost I decided hourly. to stop getting a perm, it was like, okay, this is a life decision yeah. that I'm gonna have to make. And mom, are you okay with it? Like you're yeah. asking your auntie what she did yeah. when she went natural. It's a thing. And then being on TV with it and everyone having a comment about it oh, my. becomes the next level of it. I know. I felt so and bad. Remember Simone Biles and everybody was yes. giving her? I'm like, oh, are you serious? Are you gonna sweat this, this young woman? She, she has 16 gold medals. So how, how many do you have? Did you, um, Zero, but, but, but you yeah, have straight but, hair. Got but it. It, is, it, is, it is a thing. But I don't put straightener in my hair. It uh -huh. just is how it is. It's just beautiful. That's that green grease, y'all. I already saw it. It's sitting over there. So I know what she puts in her hair. Call me. <laughs> if you want the update on <laughs> Now, Maria, if you're yes. going to be telling all my secrets, we're going to have to you cut have to give me out. No, 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 no. no OK, kidding. before I let you no, go, no, I did no. bring you. I brought you a gift. Oh. Because you don't come to somebody's house without giving me a gift. You are so good. You know what, what is this? 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 Ah, <laughs> the slippers! See, I just felt I like... Love, <laughs> I'm, oh, 
Oh, yes. Just a lot of fun socks. Oh, I just my feel gosh. Like... That's great. You know. Where's the other one? Look at the other one. I oh, know you can know. We mash, can we have matching slippers on? Well, you know, these are Oprah's favorite things, these slippers. So, Listen. Maria Taylor, I'm going to take off Oprah's. <laughs> And I'm well. Oprah girl. <laughs> oh. She'll put them back on another time. Oh, oh these are good. Right? Oh, these are good. And they're, I got a big foot, so Ooh, you know, they came in my size, so. Yeah. Robin, you're oh. now and forever my auntie. Thank you, Maria. I, I Notice I, I love turned you. to the camera. I turned her face <laughs> she away. Said, she oh. did. Oh, thank you. That was not smooth. Let me try that. Wait, wait. Come on. Okay. Thank, you. Said, thank, thank you. Thank you, Robin. If I, if I could teach you anything. <laughs> turn towards the it's camera. Right. But can I just, can I just, can I just. Uh, yes some praise on you right now, some genuine, authentic praise. Mm -hmm. You are talented. Uh, I love meeting your mama. Oh, I love that she came here. Yeah. Um, you came here and you made an impression. There are a lot of people who sit in my dressing room and want advice in that. You were so, um, you, you know, can I just tell you something yeah. that you said? Because remember, you said you turned it back on me. Yeah. And you said, well, what do you want to do? And I said, oh, I'm thinking about, you know, talk shows yeah. and th things like that. And I said to you, that I'm thinking of an ensemble cast because mm -hmm. that's how it works. It can't yeah. be just one no. person. I you said, know what she said to you? She said to me, she goes, you're Robin Roberts. Right. And I was like, you don't need but you, want, people want to hear from you. But the way you said that, uh -huh. and it wasn't, wasn't like sucking up or no. anything like that. It was such, and it was like, main, sometimes I think we forget, mm -hmm. we're so busy trying to climb the next sure. mountain that we forget all the mountains Where you came we from. We already climbed all these mountains. Yes. Why do we think this one in front of us is so much Bigger, bigger than, than the one ones that we just did. So I want to thank you oh. for instilling in me. And you might see me on the next uh, Robin Roberts show. Who I'm knows? a girl. I'm gonna be your editor, <laughs> your producer. I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna be handing out flyers. Yeah. No, seriously. But Everyone needs to hear from Robin. Thank you so much. You didn't have to do this. She's been through a whole show. I know she has nine thousand other things to do, but you stopped it. She spent twenty minutes with me again. And thank I got you. new slippers. <laughs> thank y'all. Thank you. And team. <laughs> and scene. And scene. <laughs>